You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan Teus. How are you, bud? Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Uh, we did the uh, best of 2019 last week. It was uh, it was great. I really like it. Thank you, Mia, for putting that together. Uh, I know it wasn't easy, and Bryce, you guys uh, worked hard to get that all figured out, but we hadn't done something like that, and people do that, and I thought it'd be fun to do a top 13, and um, you know, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, we figured it out, right? Yeah. Well, Mia figured it out. But uh, hey, look, I want to say hello. Shout out to uh, everybody that keeps supporting the show, the Patreons, the patrons. I love you guys. Uh, thank you for subscribing and you know giving your money to a show that uh, you love and uh, you believe in, and that means a shit ton more than you could possibly imagine. You know, it's been a good year so far. Look, it's just started. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming up with uh, with the podcast. Got some great guests, really great guests, and uh, we're doing the video. We're going to transition into video, and I hope that works. I hope that gives us a bigger, even a bigger audience. And, uh, you know, it's, it's worth a shot, isn't it, Ryan? I think so. All the kids are doing it and, uh, this show won't lose anything other than you could still listen to it on all your platforms. And then, uh, you could also watch it probably on YouTube at some point, correct? Indeed. Indeed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I will be in Portland with Tom Welling, my cohort on January 24th for the wizard con or whatever. So get your tickets. We're doing a Smallville nights. We do the improv show. So get your tickets. Go to wizardworld.com. You'll figure it out. Go on my Twitter or whatever. Also be in Mexico, March 13th. Yeah. Ooh. That whole weekend, Tom and I will be there. We're finally going to Mexico. I know I have, we have a lot of uh, Mexican friends, and uh, I'm excited about that. I love uh, I love Spanish. I love sp uh, learning Spanish, which I'm not great at. I love people speaking Spanish. Um, it's great language. It's easy to listen to. Although sometimes I think people are fighting when they're just having a conversation. Yeah. You know what it's I mean? It's lively. It's lively. It's a yeah. lively, fun conversation. Where are you going to Mexico? Uh, Mexico City for the for their uh, Comic-Con or whatever. So Tom and I will be there for three days. It's going to be great. So make sure you sign up for that and check out our little improv show. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, thank you for supporting the podcast on uh, Instagram. Make sure you, you keep that up. It's inside of you at inside of you podcast on Instagram, Twitter at inside of you pod. Thank you for supporting the band left on Laurel. If you want any merch, you can go to the uh, inside of you store and get merch there for inside of you or left on Laurel. Also I want you guys to know that pure evil, the wine that we do with knocking point wines, a new, uh, there's subscriptions available. We did a new one. I'm the pure Wellings, the evil now. And uh, you can get that. Go to knockingpoint.com. Use my code, which uh, you'll just look on, on Twitter or Instagram. You get a discount on that, on the subscription. But it's badass. We sold that last year, and I'm pretty sure we're going to sell it this year. So so that's pretty much that. You know, this guest today, I just like, I like that he likes me. You know, you want to be liked. And I feel like this guest is someone who... You know, probably gets asked to do tons of interviews and Stephen Amell, and he gets, uh, you know, but he, we had a connection. I don't know what it was. The first episode, he says, I, I like your questions. I like your, the way you handle an interview. And I was like, wow, this is great. And he came back and I, I must've caught him at a, a crazy time. I did catch him at a crazy time, Ryan, and you were here and he was talking about life and he just seemed like, uh, he was just finishing up season eight of Arrow, his final season. He looked a little tired, still gorgeous, still gorgeous. And I, I could just tell something was a little off. He was more uh, emotional. He made it very clear that he was just very tired. He had just had it. Like, you know, I, I can't even imagine. I'm a single guy here. Uh, and, you know, wife, kid, back and forth, Vancouver, you're the lead. You're holding it. You're constantly doing fight scenes because he loves to do his own fight scenes. Yeah, I think you look at him, you think this is just the perfect human being, the perfect specimen. This is like the Ivan Drago in Rocky IV. But things start to unwind. In the first half of this interview, let's just say things get interesting. I wasn't surprised as much as Ryan was. Ryan was a little... You were nervous. You didn't. You didn't. You know. You didn't know what to do. You hadn't experienced people like sort of. Uh, he was falling apart like right in front of us. Yeah, he was falling apart a little bit, and I think he was just trying to keep it together. I don't know why he showed up for the podcast, and I kept. You know, I joke with him in the second half of this interview, but you'll hear about all of it. And I'm glad that he was a sport, and you got to hear the before and after. So this is a two parter. So um, let's get into it. It's my point of view. You're listening to inside of you. 
Inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. You were just looking at a picture of uh, the first X amount of guests I had on the show, and you're one of them. Only three people have come on twice. That's you. Cat, Zach Levi, and Tom Willing. That's it. And you live so close. You could come really every day if you want. Do you, do you want me to? Do you think we'd run out of shit to say? Maybe. I don't know. I think just in the kitchen now, we could have probably had a conversation for a good four minutes. When did you move up from the because last time we did this we were down in the uh in the basement yeah you know i wanted it to be a little in, more intimate but the real reason was i felt like all that shit had to be put out guests would come and then not that i would have to put it back but i put some of it back sure right so i felt like i had to move everything here you just walk in you're ready to go yep so, what do you think do you like this do you feel claustrophobic i'm wor i'm mostly worried about keeping my keeping as close to the microphone as possible yeah that's that's important there we go i noticed no. you're drifting for <laughs> it's burped you don't sorry i burped too i burped in the last podcast you don't do many podcasts i haven't done a podcast since i did your podcast is that true mm -hmm. no you did you did one you did uh anna ferris at the time oh because that's when you told her that i was one of the best podcasts out there i just want to i just remember that yeah but that was like uh i liked doing it but that was a requirement that was a comic-con thing oh the anna ferris was yeah so it was fun. It was nice, but it was you. You didn't want to do it. I guess they require. I, I was in. I was indifferent. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have seeked it out. I remember specifically wanting to do your podcast. Really? Yeah. Why is that? We didn't really know each other. But why did you want to do my podcast? Because you think you're pretty fucking good at the. I like the interviews. You seem to get people um, to share stuff that they wouldn't necessarily <laughs> share. In fact, oh, I'm a man. little. I'm a little frightened. <laughs> you, you don't need to be frightened. You really don't need to be frightened. It's just there's so much to talk to you about, and I, you know, I, I, you know, I had just print all this stuff out, but I didn't even look at it because it it doesn't really matter. I know enough about you, but you're interesting, and I will tell you this: this is completely non sequitur. Mm -hmm. My friend Troy, he um, he said something I don't know if I told you about, but he was like, "Yeah, you know, I heard Steven's a little intense on the Arrow set," or this was years ago. This was many years ago. And you, I think you discussed this. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Is, is he a nice guy? Or like, he listened to the podcast. Oh. And said, boy, was I wrong. This guy's awesome. You know, when I started Arrow, like, and we talked about this before, I definitely gripped a little bit too tight, you know, like noise on set, phones You're going off. You're probably anxious too. You're the lead. It's a new thing. Yeah. I'm, I wasn't, I also, you know, relatively speaking, wasn't as mature. And that really changed around season three. And yet- I wore that fucking reputation until uh, until we finished the show. Right? You, you if hate you this. Ever hear, if you ever hear it, you will never hear a bad thing about me from the Arrow crew. Never. From cast, ever. Never. My reputation is rumor and innuendo. That's that. That's what I'm getting at. It is not deserved, and, and it fucking pisses me I off. I know it does, and that's why I knew I could bring it up to you. Yep. Because I know you, and I know what it's like to be on set for hours upon hours, and the uh, the the pressure. And my theory is that if you um, somebody says, "Oh, I met this one actor on the street, and he was kind of rude," I'm like, "Do you think maybe he had a bad day?" Yeah. I never, I never believe that shit. You always give the benefit. Now, if people, person after person, start coming up it's always one guy one story that sort of evolves i have never ever treated anyone that i work with with anything less than the utmost respect Catherine mcnamara i'm going to tell you this now okay. i interviewed her and i think yours is going to air before hers but it doesn't matter okay i asked her i didn't ask her anything about you really other than you know just regular shit you know you're her dad on the show yeah that's true but i <laughs> i said uh Who's your favorite? She goes, oh, I don't want to. I go, no, 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 no. I go, who's your favorite? Who do you like? Look, really look forward to working with every day. It could be many people. Just, just throw the first person that comes to your mind. She goes, Stephen. She nice. said, Stephen. Did she not, Ryan? You were there. It was an hour ago. It was an hour ago. I remember it well. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Makes me feel good. I'm very, very aware that there's only so much about your reputation that you can control. I, I just know that that everyone that everyone that worked on Arrow cast and crew, when we announced that it was going to be the final season uh, and that we were going to be 10 episodes, every single show 
in Vancouver immediately tried to hire our crew, like by going, well, you're, you're only going to do 10 episodes. Come with us. Do 22. They stayed. Everyone stayed because I asked them to. And I feel like I earned it. I fucking love that. Yeah. And you say that with conviction. You, you believe it because you know it. You know it to be true. I, I would say the same thing. Catherine said something. Not that we're going to toot our own horns here, <laughs> but fuck it. She was like, you know, oh my God, I was talking to JD and I was talking to so and so and my other crew when we were doing Shadow Hunters and this. And they all knew you and they all were telling stories. I'm like, oh, fuck. What were they saying? They're like, no, they all admired you. I'm like, what? How would Troy ever hear? Where's Troy getting so his still information on that. from? No, yeah. I'm just curious as to where he's getting his information that's, from. You know that, what I mean? Well, that's the thing. I think he was um, doing extra work on Arrow. Okay. He's a, look, he's a great guy. I love you, Troy. He knows that. I'm a nerd, but he's Nerdstradamus. Okay. This guy this is a guy. He, <laughs> he dresses up to do Renaissance shows. I love it. I think it's great. He's, he's a, a great friend. He's smart. He's a good actor. Years ago, he was an extra or something. And I think somebody said something or somebody, you know, people gossip, people talk. But he didn't say you were a bad guy. He just said, yeah, I wonder what he's like in, you know, in person. Because, uh, you know, it seemed like maybe there was some difficulty early on. Sure. Yeah. Early on, it was a little, I was a little quick tempered, but I, I don't take any of it back. What drives you crazy? What like upsets you that, you know, is, is warranted? that's worthy of like you know what let me guess probably when you're walking on set and now you're waiting 30 minutes when they said they're ready to shoot that probably bothers the shit out of you it does it really does especially when you're the lead actor on a show like i said before i i i, I spoke to the like you know to a man i spoke to the crew you know early on and it's like do you guys want to break for 15 minutes every day and talk about our feelings or do you want to get this shit done because we just have to come back the next day <laughs> right and I, I know this is true. I did annoy the crew, right? Because I had this encyclopedic knowledge of the show. And if we were doing something and it didn't track, it didn't match up, it didn't fit with continuity, I would put my foot down until we got it right. Ah, so you were getting somewhere. And so, but here's what would happen. 20 different times, a crew member has come up to me and go, gone, you know, it's really fucking annoying when you do that. But you know what's most annoying about it? And I go, no. And they go, you're always fucking right. So we, it's like, it's annoying, but we begrudgingly accept that you're doing it in servitude to the show. And I, I believe that wholeheartedly. I'm never that guy, which is probably annoying in the other way. I go the opposite direction where I'm like, you know. What do you mean? I'll give you an example. I was playing, uh, there was an episode where I play Zod. Yeah. Right? And I remember to Welling, I go, guess what, bro? He's like, what? I go. Guess who's getting paid twice on this episode? He's like, who? Me. He's like, why? I go, I'm playing Lex. I'm playing Zod. They paid you twice? No. No. Okay. 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 <laughs> they did okay. not. And on top of it, <laughs> I saw Christopher Walken on some talk show and he goes, I don't read scripts. You're going to find out what happens anyway. My scenes had nothing to do with Tom. Right. They really had no I didn't need to know anything about his world because not knowing other than what I was supposed to know as, as the character. Yeah. So when my character came in, I want, I, I, a lot of times I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. But you read every script, every script. Well, your arrow. Yeah. You, you have to, I didn't have to do that. But if I'm reading every script and you, but you went above because you, you learned everything there was to know about Oliver Queen and, and, and arrow and the universe. Correct. That's right. Yep. So you would say things like, like what's something that, in retrospect, annoyed someone that you said, something that you can remember that you go, no, Oliver wouldn't say that or do that or wear that. What was it? I can't remember any specific instance, but I'd actually have the script supervisor. They would come ask me questions. They'd be like, hey, what happened? And I'll go, in season two, in episode 13, this person said this to another person. That's why we can't do it the way that's written and you need to make a change. You're that aware. Yeah. Are you, that, that, I think that takes a certain brilliance though, doesn't it? Uh, Not to, I mean, like, is, is, or is that just, you're so aware and you're so disciplined and you're so, and you have a good memory. I have a shit memory with regular stuff. Like I forget stuff all the time. I'm terrible with people's names. What's my last name? Rosenbaum. Okay. Um, you remember his name? You almost said it. Craig, 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 Chris. 
Ryan. Yeah. Fuck. I didn't say See, it. I'm back. God no. damn it. You met him once. It was quick. You, you, and by the way, last time there was another dude sitting there. Yeah. That's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> it still bugs me. Do you cry? I mean, I know you cry probably when your kid was born. You probably cried at your wedding. I've cried twice today. What? You're a liar. I'm not lying. You cried. I'm uh, worried that I'm going to cry during this podcast. You're not going to cry. But if you cry, you're comfortable because you know me. I don't joke. I cry. You know yeah. I cry. You, you know, I, but, but tell me what you cried about today. Um, I have really, really been uh, struggling with the end of the show. I'm mentally exhausted. And uh, my wife forced me to go to the uh, forced me to go to the doctors today because she was she was worried that something was was actually wrong with me. And I said, nothing is wrong with me. I'm just tired. I'm like, I don't want to go to the doctor. She got really mad at me. And she told me to get my shit together. And that really, it set me off. Because I was, I was, yeah, I was literally sitting on the ground. I've gone down a couple of times over the past few weeks. Down. Down. Down to a dark place. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I spent, uh, um, my family was going out to Palm Springs. And uh, I just looked at my wife and I'm like, I can't even get myself off the ground right now. Laid on the couch for two days. Didn't eat. I'm in a state of mourning and it's really tough. I also feel as though I need to mentally reset. If I oh, could, yeah. if I could, if I could do it again, I wrapped Arrow on the fifteenth of November. If I could do it again, I would have absconded with my family. I'd be in Africa right now on a safari with no phone. I just feel like I've been trying to do things for people for the past for the eight past years. eight years, and I just need a fucking break. I want to be a dad. I want to be a husband. I don't even really want to talk to my friends that much. I just need a break. And I, I and I and I cried about it twice today. Just randomly. Mm. In I, front I, of your I, wife? Yeah. And I still don't like crying in front of my wife that much. There's something about it that that feels emasculating. That's even, a, that's a stigma. That's that's Yeah, shit. I I I know I'm wrong. It doesn't mean that I don't feel that way. Right. You know what I mean? It's still hard, even though you know like it shouldn't be wrong crying in front of someone, but there's a certain perception or there's Maybe it's all you've ever known. Maybe was your dad a crier? Yeah, I remember the first time that my dad cried in front of me. He cried he cried uh uh after my great grandfather, his grandfather, um called him and saying happy birthday and he was telling me about it, and then he grabbed my hand and I looked up and he was crying and I'd never seen my dad cry. I didn't know that adult men could cry. I've never seen my dad cry. Have you not? Never. It's jarring. The first time that you see it, it's it's uh I mean I was, you never forget I, it. N- never. I was I was twelve years old. Remember it to this day. You're sitting at the kitchen table. Do you realize that this is already the best podcast I've ever had? Really? You know why? Because I don't know if it's that I, I caught you in a time of just pure vulnerability, but it is so it's it's just it's powerful in a sense that I, I remember just leaving a show when I wasn't even the lead. And I remember partly it's like it's all over and i know in a way you're like i want to go back to being a father i want to go back to being married and you're like but regardless underneath all that is that is the end of something that you've been a part of i I don't know maybe a fifth of your life something like that uh well i mean i'm 20 20 25 percent of it 25 so to end something like that to then say okay Let's go back to the world, back to life. I don't want to go back to. I want. I want to go on vacation. You want to go on vacation? Where do you want to? You want to go to Africa? You want to do something? I, in retrospect, I mean, I'm I'm going away. We're taking our daughter to Disney. We're going to spend uh, Christmas in London. A- anytime some someone would ask something of me for the past month, I, I'm I'm like offended. You know what I mean? It's like leave me alone. I can't leave even do me it. alone. I can't do anything. It's just been people constantly fucking telling me what i have to do i don't have to do shit no i need to be a husband and a father that's it and a decent friend that's it and a son that's and all more, that i need more to do importantly and i'm not a doctor yeah i've been to many but you know what you need to do you need to take care of your fucking self i know before you could take care of your your family and that's why your wife is probably that's why she's like going, just see somebody because I'm worried about you and I'm not a doctor. So of course that comes out of love. Of course it comes out of, and it's like- She's she's genuinely worried about course. me. Of course. And I'm worried about you. I'm looking at you, but I'm worried about you in a way that 
I know a few months from now that you're gonna you're gonna be great. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be recharged. You're gonna be happy. You're gonna feel like God. I feel like a great dad right now. I feel like I have the energy to do things. Yeah. Uh, you know, and and that that's just the reality. That's not me trying to make you feel good. That's like it's gonna take some time. You're in mourning of a show yeah. that was part of your life for mo a quarter of your life. You are also physically and mentally spent. Th there are moments in my life where. That's what happened. That's why I went to that clinic. You know, I told you that. Yeah, I. I, I that, that's why I went, man. I, uh, I've considered going to something like that. You know what? Uh, it's the the best thing I could have done. I for me, I think you've always like had a good grasp of like who you are. I think you are more mature than I am. I think you had good role models. I think you were probably loved a little more than, or at least felt more love than I was. But, but so what I'm saying is, I don't think I really grew up at all until I went to this place and realized things that I never, when they said things like, hey, you're relearning. I stopped them with tears in my eyes and said, no, I'm fucking learning. <laughs> I'm learning for the first time. I'm a first grader in art class and I'm sitting here with a woman who's patient, who's looking at me. And so it was life-changing for me. It really was. And I have a lot of work to do. And I'm just like going. When'd you go? I went in July for 22 days. Jesus. 20, you know, they say it takes 21 days to break a habit, right? Sure. So that was. Did they say that? I didn't know that when I went there. Okay. I, I felt like I was like, in fact, I remember, do you know, I said something to the, I've never really, I haven't talked, I don't think as much about this, but I will with you because so, you're being as vulnerable. So I'll be just as vulnerable. Okay. Um, I remember I walked in there and I sat down with one of the therapists and I go, I don't expect you to be able to help me. You have people in here that are rock bottom with drugs and alcohol and i'm not really on any of that stuff i mean i take some sleeping pills and xanax and mm -hmm. but i'm just like i don't i'm fucking lost man i am a lost fucking soul and i'm tired of feeling sorry for myself i don't reach out to anybody really because they i can't even articulate what's going on in my head. Mm -hmm. I can't even like put sentences together to tell someone how I'm actually feeling because it goes in so many different directions. One of my friends went there and I go, he was really low. This person went there and they were fucking low. I, I'm not as low as that, but I'm probably, you know, I, I don't know. I remember saying, if this person was a two, I was probably, I'm like a four maybe. Yeah. When I left that place, the woman sat me down. She goes, remember coming in here and saying, you know, all these things. She, I go, yeah. She goes, you were lower than your friend. And that I immediately started crying Yeah, because someone acknowledged how I've been feeling. They actually understood that I was in such a fucked up place and I needed to make drastic changes. And I had been working. I really, I, I want to live. I want to enjoy life. I want to, and it's very easy for people to judge. It's very easy for people to say, Come on, dude. You got a great life. You got a great house. But there was stuff that went on in my life that I just never took care of. I never took care of myself. Yeah. So you got to take care of yourself, you know? I also think that probably over the course of over the course of eight years, I said to my wife today, I'm like, I think over the course of eight years, I, I missed almost a year's worth of sleep. I do not doubt that for a fucking you know, minute. Shoot dude. until five o'clock in the morning and I'd, I'd be on a seven o'clock flight. How, how do you do that? I don't know. Because I remember thinking, how is Welling doing this on, on Smallville? How is he doing that? Because I would work three days out of the five, maybe four, but like I'd have a little time off. And sure, I mean, the hours were long. I had to shave my head, but I couldn't do what he did. Yeah. I couldn't do what you did. I don't, maybe it's you. I, I he was younger than me. I disagree with you. If Smallville had been about Lex Luthor and you had, had to keep Tom's hours, you would have done it. You I would have, have done, done it. You would have done but it. But I would be where you are now. Yeah. I would be struggling. I would, when did you rap? November 15th. Dude, you, it's not even a month. I know. Your body is going through such changes. Because when, when's the last time you had more than like three months off in your life? Two months off in your life? Uh, 2009. 10 years ago is the last time when you were also 28 years old. It's exactly 29. right. 
Yeah. What's your body like when you're young, you don't even realize you could just do whatever. You could sleep till uh you could wake go to bed at four in the morning, wake up at five, and you yeah. you somehow can do it. But when the older you get, and that's why at 47 now, I couldn't, I couldn't. I don't they, they don't interest me. They offer me stuff. I'm not gonna lie, they offer me I've been offered series, one hour series, and I go, no. Unless it's a 10 episodes or eight episodes a year. And I have ample time to learn my shit and I'm not, yeah. because I don't want to bury myself in the ground yeah, trying to do something that I'm just not willing to put myself through. I mean, I, I took another series immediately. As, I know. As the lead. As, but it's eight episodes. Eight episodes and it's something that you really love. Yeah. I mean, you love wrestling. Yeah. What's it called? It's uh, Heels. Stars. Yeah. Heels. Mm -hmm. When do you start? When, 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 well, you've got uh, uh, March 15th or so. March 15th. Yeah. So you have plenty of time. Yeah, I got a lot of training to do starting in January, but yeah, I got a lot of time. But eight episodes. Eight episodes. When I saw that video last year of you wrestling Chris Daniels. Yeah, Christopher Daniels. <sighs> have you seen that, Ryan? Uh, no. You know, I think when people thought, oh, an actor is going to wrestle with uh, one of these professionals. I'm a, I judge people yeah. before I fucking know them. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I've done that. Sure. <laughs> like Troy. Fuck you, Troy. You hear me. I love you. He knows it. But then I see this video. You have to see him wrestle. You're doing shit that I'm like, why are they letting him do this? How is he not dying? I didn't ask. That's how they let me. It is beyond me. And so tell me this when you do this new if you guys haven't seen it look up Stephen amell wrestling what would they look up w uh, uh Stephen amell all in all in it's it's to me it's unbelievable i know you'll watch it and shit your pants but you're, you're a wrestler in the series yeah please please don't let d d let them do your stunts i'm not gonna have a stunt double i can't i'm gonna be in a speedo how the fuck am i gonna have a stunt double i want to get this on video you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be in a speedo. Well, I'm gonna on the wear show? I'm gonna wear wrestling trunks. We call them trunks, but it's it's ostensibly a speedo. So your body has to look really good. You don't want to look like the Undertaker. You want to look more like I do. I I want to get uh, thicker. Actually, like thicker. I, I like I don't I don't want to I don't want to be like super ripped. I want to look strong. You want to look like a wrestler. Yeah, like a real fucking yeah tough big fucker. Yeah. A lot of work to do on my legs too. That's going to be the biggest thing. How often will you wrestle? Um, I think in the first episode, I, my character wrestles like three times. Do you do crazy times. shit? Do you jump off the ropes? Do you do a flip? I'm going to have to do some crazy shit. Are you going to flip yourself? Yeah. I could do a front flip on a trampoline. So can I. I, I can't do a back one. I can. You can? Yeah. Ryan? Not a chance. No. No. Not even a little bit. You know, I, I hate to ask this to you, but you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not asking anything of you now because I heard what you said. Don't stop asking me for things. <laughs> but come March, when this show comes out, or when you start filming, start it's filming. not gonna come out till August. I'm gonna want you to come on and promote that. Show. I actually don't know when it airs. I'll come back on, dude. I think it'll come on. I think it'll probably come out in the fall, but I don't know. I could be making that up. That's something that it's written for you. That was that was the funny thing is uh, they went out to. Um, uh, they went out to another actor whose whose name I'll I'll leave out of this, and I don't know if they didn't know I was available, but they're like, you know, we've we've got this uh, we've got this wrestling show called Heels at Stars, and uh, we've gone out to uh, actor X, and the first three people that they that they said that to, they go, did Stephen ML pass? And they they rescinded their offer to this guy and offered it to me. Wow, how yeah. pissed was he? Don't know. You know what? I wouldn't be that pissed if I found out that. I my body couldn't handle this kind of stuff right now. I'd get a stunt double for sure. If they asked me to walk across the street, I, my stunt double better be there. Because, <laughs> you know, it's dangerous. Yep. You could easily get hit by a car as easy as you could fly, you know, whatever. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. So am I. So there are good things. I think also right I also, now, I like, but I was, I was a little worried that I was, you know, like, I was like going home with the first girl that smiled at me at the bar. You know what I mean? But it's such a good project and the scripts are really great and uh, it's funny. And you have half of December, January and February before you even really have. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to tell you something. You might, you have more power than you think. If you said, Hey, I just want January off to recoup with my family. Another, just one month. Can you just push one month? They would do it. Yeah. They asked me when I wanted to start. Okay. So say April, take an extra month. I'm fine with March. <laughs> 
Don't tell me what to do. Do you think that you're you're uh, you have yet to mourn this show, like being done with it? Do you think that's going to hit you when you least expect it, or do you think you're like you're just it's been so that you're pretty much done? This is you're you're good. You've been wanting this to end, even though you love it. You love the fans. I I do love I do love the fans. Um, <clears throat> I just don't want any responsibility right now, other than husband and father. I really don't. Are you going to go see someone, or you're not going to do that? I might. I think I might. I wish you can go see this guy, Doctor Tesla, Rowan, Connecticut. This old Jewish guy. Is it just... hot in here, or am I just sweating? Hang on a second. You are sweating. I am. I don't know why. It, hey, look, if you're cool with me sweating, I'll just sit here and sweat. No. Don't worry about it, man. No, no, I'm hot, too. I am hot. That's yeah. Is it, it okay. is hot. I noticed it, but I'm not sweating. Honestly, man, I think I might be sick. You want to throw up? Yeah. Well, come on. Use my bathroom. I, uh, I might have to cut this short, man. I'm not feeling well at all. Really? Yeah. Well, why don't you... I, you leave if you want, but why don't first you drink some water? I'm gonna get you some uh, Tylenol. No, I, I think I just gotta go. Do you want me to bring you home? Let me drive you home. I actually, just kind of want to walk. Do you sure. mind? Yeah, I, I, I just mind. need I just need fresh air. Dude, come on. Thanks, buddy. Inside of you is brought to you by Warby Parker. I'm wearing them now. Ryan, you see these? These are Warby Parkers. It's my specs. Yep, and I went out to lunch with a girl today, and she's like, Ooh. some people don't look good in glasses, but you do, and I'm like, Warby Parker. Man, is that what she sounds like? Um, no. Why did I make her sound like that? She was actually way smarter than me, so I, I just don't know how to sound like a really smart girl. I don't know if it, was, if, it was just, if it was just a lady version of you. Maybe that's well, what no, you like I said it. smart. Uh, I said smart. Uh, First, I'll say they're, they're awesome. They really are. They're comfortable. They're just they're light. But the the fact is, Ryan, I went online. I just clicked glasses that I thought were cool. I like that. Those look good on me. This type doesn't. So I just chose five pair of glasses. And what happens is they send you these glasses and you try them on for free. You don't have to even buy them. Ships for free, includes a prepaid return shipping label. It's pretty phenomenal. And I was like, you know, glasses. But when you choose five, one usually fits. With these, actually a couple fit, but I chose these. And now I want to get another pair. They're pretty dope, you gotta admit, right? Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah, they are nice. Yeah. And you go to the places and you're like, oh my God, this is like $400 plus the lenses and they're really expensive. But Warby Parker makes it affordable and that's what I like about them. Head to warbyparker.com slash IOU. You take a quick quiz. I'm not good at quizzes. This was easy because you just pick what you like. You take a little quiz, you order your free home try-on. Introducing Scout by Warby Parker. Comfortable, breathable, affordable daily contact lenses. They got those there too. Made from a super moist material that resists drying for lasting hydration and comfort. Order a trial pack that includes six days worth of contacts for only $5. Then receive $5 off your next Warby Parker order. You guys are going to love this place. Warby Parker. Get to it. You know, almost 1 billion people worldwide lack access to glasses. That's 15% of the global population can't effectively learn to work, which is crazy because glasses were invented how many years ago? Like a long time ago. Get your glasses. Make sure you head to warbyparker.com slash IOU. Take that little quiz. Uh, free home try-on and shipping. Learn more at warbyparker.com slash IOU. Warbyparker.com slash IOU. Inside of you is brought to you by Tushy. You know I like this product, Ryan. Because it's for your butt? It's for my butt. Now don't fast forward. You all need things for your butt. Tushy, I'm going to be honest with you. It sprays your ass with fresh water. It's not toilet water. I think that's what people think. They're like, but it's water, but it's dirty. Tushy connects to the water supply behind your toilet to spray your dirty parts with clean, fresh water. It's the same water you brush your teeth with. I bet you didn't know that, Ryan. I did not know that. So you're saying I could use a bidet to brush my teeth? You might. Oh. I would do that. It's oh. a new thing. I'm like Spray your shot. teeth with your bidet. Use tushy. Do you use wet wipes or any uh, thing? You, you, what do you do with your butt? Toilet paper? Standard? Well, wet wipes are uh, worse than toilet paper. They're terrible for the environment because yeah. I know a lot of people do that, and I was doing that, and it uh, they cause anal fissures. You don't want your anus fissuring. Nope. 
79 bucks. 79 bucks to have your ass cleanly sprayed every day with fresh water and not wasting all that paper, wasting all that, I mean, ass juice all over it. Like, you're going to have to wash it. You might not even have to wash your hands after this tushy thing. <laughs> you should probably still wash your hands. Why? I'm not touching my butthole. <laughs> you should still do it. It's just a sleek bidet attachment. It clips under your existing toilet and sprays your butt completely clean with fresh water. It's called tushy, okay, guys? It's the best thing you can do for your butt. Go to... HelloTushy.com slash IOU and get 10% off your order. That's HelloTushy.com slash IOU and get 10% off your order. HelloTushy.com slash IOU. Hey guys, it's Michael Rosenbaum. Um, this next part, this is the second half of the interview with Stephen Amell. Uh, what you just heard was a guy who was exhausted and, um, you know, there are as much as he plays a superhero on TV, uh, you know, we're human beings and I commend him for coming back and talking to me, but he had to go. He had to cut this interview short as you hear. And, uh, it was, it was a little bit, uh, it was a little crazy as you're going to hear. So this is, uh, Steven comes in two weeks later and this is how he finished the interview. I thought that for the new part, let me just make sure my phone is off. The new part on heels? On heels that I would go with, um... A savage look. And I would go with a mustache. So I cut my hair really short, started to grow the mustache. There's no good time to start growing a mustache. Like those, if you can make it through the first couple of days, you're in good shape. You grow it fast though. Well, yeah, but I, I when did I, I think I shaved right when I got to, over the Christmas break, right when I got England? to. No, I was in Florida. Florida. I shaved in Dallas. I think I shaved in Florida. And then I was in London, and I let it grow for a little bit. And then I went to one of those grooming shops, which I love so There's much. A what are grooming shops? It's like a, you know, te, you know the Ted Baker products. I do. Yeah, there's Ted Baker grooming stores, and you go in there, and it's like they groom you. It's like forty or fifty pounds or something like that, and you're in there for an hour. They cut your hair, they shave you, they they massage your arms, they. Will they wax your back? No. Well, what fuck, man? That's I think I, I, I think I think basically it's neck down. You're neck down. You're on your own. Ah, uh, that didn't sound like a groom. That's not, I mean, that sounds kind of like it sounds okay. Yeah. But I also wanted like a professional to set the parameters of the mustache because I didn't want to too too <laughs> small. That's one yeah, thing. You definitely don't okay? want the Hitler. But too big. That's sort of like caricature -y. I I don't know. I think that this character possibly <laughs> I like, has I like a mustache. This. I like this. And in, by the way, I look at you. And I guarantee you'd say the word brother differently with this stash. Like without the mustache, it might be brother, but this might be brother. Brother. No, I like it. you know, you're a wrestler, right? And when does it take place in the 80s or no? No, it's present day. It's, it's just present day. It's present day. It's just small town. It's called Duffy, Georgia. Well, small you're also a really, like, you're a really good looking guy. So with a mustache, you're still good looking, but it gives you like an off, like kind of weird. I, he's attractive, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could escape for a minute with the Mel's mustache. Um, I also, it's really great being around my wife every time someone compliments me on it. Because she doesn't like it. Yeah, I don't know. And you just look at her and go, huh? See? There you go. He liked it. No, but I had my hair really short. I mean, it's been growing for like two weeks, but I don't know. New year. I, I actually don't, I don't know why I said that. I don't believe in any of that shit. What, just, the new year? The whole new year, whatever. It just so happens that the new year has coincided with a sort of a new chapter in my life, but new year. But what come on, wait, hang on, let's take a break here. N you, like you don't believe in the whole resolutions no. and you don't believe. I right, dude, I spent my friend Rob and I, granted we smoked a little bit of a joint. I'm not recommending that. You don't need to, but a few days before the new year and we sat we went back to my house and we just like rode out two dudes wrote out all the things we want to do all the things we want to accomplish so they're there in writing and then i then i type them up the next day mm -hmm. and they're in front of me so i could look at them and i say this is what you want to accomplish this is what you wrote down these were your wants and your things and your desires why don't you stick to these things instead of just fucking around and not having any real i don't know structure or whatever but why january 1st well what do you mean why before before january 1st, why not for january 1st? why not october 6th 
because it just doesn't seem like big. It's like you're doing it for the rest. Of, like this is all right. You've had enough shit in your in your life last year. These are all the things I did. These are all the things that were bad that happened. This is all the shit. But you know what? In about a few more days, I can enjoy. And then this is when you get busy. This is when you start doing all these things. And and people usually leave them after a few weeks, right? Everybody's yeah. like, oh, that lasted a month. I yeah. don't know. I think I'm pretty strong lately. I think I could I could stick to stuff. I mean, when I used to work in a uh, when I used to work at a gym. Um, to teaching spinning. You the, taught spinning what I, year? Oh gosh, uh, two thousand. I probably started in two thousand and two. Was it fun? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was how I kind of got into acting. Insofar as I, um, was able to teach and make enough money that I could go and I could audition. Spinning coach make they make good money? No, you make okay money. I made like fifty bucks a class. And how many classes a day? Sometimes like five. So you were ripped. You know, when you first start teaching, you get really skinny and then you get in this weird pseudo in shape because you're active, but not really doing anything to better yourself because there's no physical way that you can exert yourself over three classes, four classes, five classes, when your job is also to motivate people and to go around and to, in effect, be a teacher or an instructor. There's no way that you can put the same amount of effort into those classes. So you get into this sort of weird zone, whereas if you're participating in the class, and maybe you do one or two, but you do a spin class and you know you basically get five, six workouts over the course of a week, but you really commit yourself to them, you get in way better shape doing that than teaching. Dude, I am <laughs> the reason I'm laughing, because you're telling the story and you're thinking, it's not really funny what I'm saying. But what I'm laughing at is imagine you as a spin instructor with that mustache. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's work it. We're going up the mountain. Brother. Brother. <laughs> All right, look, th there's an elephant in the room. And, uh, you know, I should have started with this, but I didn't really feel the need to. Mm -hmm. But last time you came in, yeah. it was, uh, it was you look completely different. You, uh, your whole disposition. Yeah. It, it was, was just because of this, it was because of the setup of your room. I knew you were going to blame me. I couldn't get the door open. But what happened was, which I, it was so important because I remember. Yeah. Uh, so if you look, by the way, if, they're, if they're, you're listening, you obviously, they just heard yeah. what happened. Um, and we jump into this. And, and it's interesting because I didn't know. Exactly, I, Ryan was a little freaked out. Right, Ryan? Yeah, it was. Yeah, he oh, was, really? Well, he says you were white. You know, he's just like, I, I just hope he's okay. I, I don't mm -hmm. know. and But I know panic attacks. Yeah. I know overwhelmingness and i could tell you were sweating i could tell you i'm not really i don't know you just weren't well for starters i shouldn't have i, should I knew have, it i should have canceled yeah for sure yeah I you're you're yeah i don't know why in fact i said that that why would you like you yeah I, I i so um you just love the fucking podcast i, 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 I do <laughs> well i mean i left here i tried to drive i tried no i i walked home you tried to you pulled up beside me and tried to drive me yeah, home. i drove down the street yeah i was freezing on the walk, but not because I was, I was just freezing because um, I was just, my, my body and the cold. was sweating in the cold. And I got, uh, I got home, I got onto the couch, put a blanket over me and again was freezing, but just sweating uh, bullets. And, um, you know, I just told my wife, I just said, I'm having a, I had a really bad panic attack. And uh, I texted her after I said, I just got to check up on him. I oh just, really? I, I did. She didn't tell you. You know, don't please don't say anything. That's fine. but I was worried about you, and that's why I was like, "Fuck!" You know, Jess was like, "Well," or, or who said it? Maybe it was Jess. I was like, "Well, it's rush hour. All these cars, and if he's having a panic attack, you should." And that, I, I was racing down. The, I was like, oh, dude, God. get in my truck. You're like, I'm fine. Yeah, I just wanted to listen to a. <laughs> I wanted to listen to a podcast and walk by myself. Actually, not yours. All right, that's all right. It's okay. It's okay. You left mine to listen to another. It's, it's totally, <laughs> it totally makes sense, dude. No, but what were what were you thinking so when you were when, I, you, when I, you were walking down the? You know what happened earlier in the day. I was pretty positive that there was nothing physically wrong with me, but as we discussed, the leaving of the show, combined with just not really breaking away from it in my life, just in terms of getting back into Los Angeles. And it was like, I needed this clean, this clean break. I needed to go on a trip. I needed to drop my phone. I needed to. You just hadn't disconnected. I just hadn't disconnected. And ironically, I had 
said with Code 8 coming out that, you know, ideally I'm going to be in Los Angeles. I'm, you know, I'm going to take the break from mid-November until Thanksgiving. And then you guys have me for three weeks or two weeks or whatever we need for, for prep. And um, I shouldn't have done that. Now, that being said, that's when they decided to put out the movie. And I needed to promote the movie, but, and I'm not laying this all at the feet of Code 8 because I love the people that were involved and they were very fair. But you were just done. They were very fair and equitable with my time, but I was just done. It could have been anything. Didn't matter what it was. It could have been if it was Turtles back in the day. It could have been, uh, it could have been a, an award show campaign because I was playing Pitt's part in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It doesn't, wouldn't, it doesn't matter. You were done. I was done. Isn't that something when the body, I've been there, when you're, because a lot of times you're like, you know, I'll just go work out. I'll feel better. I'll just nope. go do this. I'll be fine. And then there comes a time where your body just goes, no, you're not doing any of that. Well, that was the other part. That was the other problem too, is that I'd gotten into such a rut with physical fitness or lack thereof that there was no, there was no physical release. There was no release of, there was no, there was no release of in, endorphins. I, I even found myself like with, with very little uh, not to get too personal, but with very little sexual appetite, just because I was doing nothing except just digging myself into a rut with my body. And there was some form of, A, talking about it with you and just talking about it in general, and B, going to the doctor earlier that day and realizing that, in fact, nothing was fucking wrong with me. And that's when you have that moment of realization where you go, oh, oh my God, this is in my head. Like, which is sometimes scarier. It is scarier because you're I, like, I'd rather them. T I'd rather them tell me, no, 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 no. You you need to get your spleen removed. Yeah, or you've got the <laughs> flu, a fucked up flu, something. But no, there was there was nothing. That's how it happened nothing. for me. I think it fucked me up, and I didn't know how to deal with it. I was on set, and I had a panic attack, and I said to Troy, my sister said, "Hey, man, get the doctor here. I don't feel well. I feel like I was having a heart attack. Whatever." He gets on there, he checks my vitals, like he goes, "Well, you had a physical. This is Michael. Have you ever had a panic attack? Worse." thing he could have fucking said to me yeah and i go no what and i was embarrassed i never told anybody i had panic attacks so i had like four or five on that set after that never told anybody just said i had diarrhea i had to jump run off set <laughs> people just laughed i was gonna make them laugh that's me hey i'm funny yeah. i got diarrhea <laughs> and they're like where's rosenbaum and i'm literally in the looking in the mirror at myself going you're fine you're fine. And Xanax doesn't work after that. You know, you take a Xanax yeah. after you're having a panic attack, it might, it takes, it just, dude. Well, well, even talking with doctors, the thing that they'll tell you is that one of the best things that you can do is just to self-soothe, which is easy unless you have a kid, A. What do you, what and, do you mean by self-soothe? Well, self-soothe, like, leave me alone. Just, just leave me alone and, and let me catch my breath. And that is easy for me but really difficult for my wife because she wants to help, right? And I want to tell her, you can help by waiting for me to ask you for help if in fact I need it. Otherwise, I'm just trying to catch a, a rhythm of breath and get everything under control. And the minute that a door opens or something drops on the floor or you sit down on the bed and put your hand on my shoulder... It's like I'm back at square one. But yeah. I, the biggest thing, the biggest thing for me was just all of a sudden it was like, okay, I think we did it on a Thursday or maybe on a Friday. What? The podcast. Oh. I'm trying to, I'm trying to I remember. Go, uh, what? Did you hear me? What? <laughs> like but uh, I went home, I laid on the couch, I had an IV service come to the house and uh, they just pumped me full of um, fluid that help and vitamins and there was something that they gave me directly in the IV that will make you drowsy if you take it anyway but putting it in an IV I'm, it the name is escaping me right now it's one of those basically it's one of those like cold uh medicines Does it that start will, with that, a g no not amphetamine no <laughs> no it's the like fuck was it's that? it's uh no the, it'll gosh Whatever you can get back. It'll, to but it. the point is, is that they popped it into the first bag, or I think it was actually possibly because I was all shaky. So right. they also gave me something for that. But they popped it right in there uh, during the first bag, and I got this. I got the second bag and the IV taken out of my arm while I was fast asleep. You were out. I was out. Really? I was totally out. Brent's seen. Ugh. 
you can buy it at a CVS. It just so happens when they pump it right into your veins, knocks you right out. But uh, I listened to the podcast because I asked you to send me the yeah, raw, yeah. the raw. Because th file. that's true. What I was thinking was one. I go, you know, Stevens. Many people, I'm sure, would have gone. No, no, no. Never air that. It's embarrassing. I don't want to do that. And then I thought, well, you know, this is exactly what my audience needs to listen to. The world needs to listen to. He plays a superhero. He's been on this for eight years. He's never rested. He has a family. He's doing so much things. I don't know how he's juggling it all. He hit a wall. He's fucking tired. And guess what? Superhero got tired. Yeah, he's that's a real person. He had anxiety. And I was hoping you'd say one of two things. I gave you, I go, look, we could can it. We could, uh, I could finish it and just say, hey, he had a panic attack. He's doing fine now, blah, blah, blah. And you go, no, I want to come in. Yep. I mean, if you're hearing this, I'm sure that you'll do some sort of intro to it, Pro probably. Yeah, I'm going to do an intro. But, well, you I've know, done one. Oh, okay. oh really? No, I, I mean, I've done one <laughs> if, we're, if they're listening now. Okay. <laughs> well, of course, right? But if, if you, if you want to go back and listen to it from the time that I come on and I start talking, I, I don't take back anything that I said. I could hear in my voice that maybe I was a little low on, on patience, and maybe I was a little bit more, I wouldn't say defamatory, but... Uh, direct right maybe slightly potty mouthed more than i would normally be but the general elements of what i said i don't take any issue with but i could hear myself over the last three four minutes of the of the raw file i could hear my breathing yeah start to become a little bit labored yeah you could just sense that like something was i was and i was starting to sweat you were sweating you go hey are you sweating is it hot in here the, if you rewind you could hear more of the more of the stuff and it wasn't hot it maybe a and little i tried stuffy. to get that fucking door open but i just had it stained the guy stained the fucking door out there so i couldn't get it open and i think i was getting anxiety and you're like all right you know what i'm gonna fucking go i think it was all these things this culmination of uh of all these things that were happening but dude you look you you powered through as much as you could and the fact that you're here i think that w what this says is like this is how many weeks later? Couple, three weeks later? Two yeah, weeks three later? Weeks later, but but uh, but but uh, it's the B side of a very important break, very important break, and um, the month of January for me is just very very different than what I felt like mid November through basically a couple of days after I came on with you going away. Um, that stretch of time that was really weird. I, I took real stock in the fact that I was taking a break. And that I really needed to, and that I was going to enjoy my holiday. But I've been looking forward to January more than I was even the break. Really? For sure. Yeah. Just starting something new, being refreshed. Yeah. I'm taking my kid to camp this week and I'm training for heels. And um... did you ever worry? Did you ever think, first of all, aren't you lucky? that maybe this didn't happen on set, like it happened after it was all done? Do you think if that would have happened on set, like you were like, what would you have done if you started getting these panic attacks and you couldn't rest because you were working? Because yeah. you told me something, I think, in the beginning, which I, we'd have to go, you said something like, I don't think I've ever, I really slept in the last eight years. Yeah, I, I, said, I, said, I said that basically over the past eight years, I've missed a good, a, like a good hour's sleep. Or excuse me, a good year's sleep. A good sleep. year. A good year. Out of the eight? I've probably missed a year because like I said, it's, 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 it's five o'clock on set at seven o'clock on a plane. You go, you go, you go, you go, you go. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I had incidents like this. My, my typical Christmas break was I get off, have a bunch of drinks with friends, something like that, something like that for like two, three days. If I'm not going straight away. And then I have this lull in the Christmas break where I sleep and I relax, and then I get excited to go back to work. But invariably, um, you know, back in the day, there was this crash at the end of the season, but then starting after season three of eight, there was no break. In between three and four, I went straight to Turtles, and I shot at the entirety of the break. And in between four and five, I promoted turtles and then in between five and six i went away for a little bit but then we shot all of code eight and in between six and seven i went away like on this beautiful trip but then come came back and shot code eight and went right back to work and there's just no break there, just no break you're not taking care of yourself i mean just you're not taking out, a break eating, i'm just not, not taking not a break taking a break i think stopping working out was a real big contributing 
factor because there there's got to be a there's if there's going to be a yin there's got to be a yang you can't just be the yin you know what i mean like i used to take real solace in getting on a treadmill or getting out on the road and running hard for 40 minutes 50 minutes 60 minutes 90 minutes and you weren't doing that for how long before you had this panic attack i hadn't been doing it for the better part of a year when i had that wrestling match i fractured my hip and all of a sudden I was back being very physical on the show, but I wasn't really doing anything outside of the gym. And then, you know, and then that becomes, and then, you know, October becomes November and November becomes December. And then all of a sudden I don't really need to be shirtless on the show. So fuck it. So fuck it. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, going, what, what did I even do? You know, we had this big, long round the world trip planned. You know, I was exercising a little bit, maybe, I think, just to, just very sporadically, but being active and going out and hiking and stuff like that. And then, uh, and then, <clears throat> and then my wife had a, had a, uh, a, uh, Vespa accident when we were in Mallorca and we had to cut the trip short. And, you know, all of a sudden it just, that wasn't a, that wasn't a root cause for not exercising, but, you know, there was a lot of issues going back for season eight for me just because i thought that seven was the logical conclusion you were done let's just face it i was done and you were kind of ready to move on and then you couldn't move on i was ready to move on and then you i got the proverbial offer that i that i couldn't refuse the wrestling show no no for season eight of arrow oh oh, that one yeah yeah. right because they they say all right well all right you want to be done at season seven okay well you're gonna have to shoot 22 episodes with us and so, that was more than you'd ever shot? No, we no, we shot 23 for the first six seasons. But they're like, you're going to, you know, we didn't actually know we were going to do 22 for season seven. But they're like, well, you know, you're going to have to do 22 with us, which is July through April. So are you really telling us that you want to do 22 at price X and, and finish in April and not do 32 at this price and be done in... October? That doesn't make any sense. Right? Because they're if you're renegotiating, they change your episodic fee. And I looked at it and they literally put me in a position. They put me in a position. Nobody put me in any position. It would have been fiscally irresponsible for me to say no. Right. Just just fiscally irresponsible. Right. So and I loved the shit out of season eight. I had a blast. But I was there for the money. Right, more so than I had ever love and money, love and money, but certainly money. You put your kids through, get your kid through school. I don't regret the choice. No. I think I think that ev- I feel like everyone makes the same choice. I I worked out with with Welling today, and he was telling me that. Um, <laughs> Welling just told me he doesn't want to go see Ambrosia with me on Saturday night. Really? You know Ambrosia? No. That's how much I feel. I feel for you, baby. Seventies man, but you can understand why. But I love that man. Anyway, uh, he's in good shape. Well, he's getting good shape, got in good shape yeah. for the wedding. Yeah. And I, you know, I keep telling him, I go, wow, you look really good. He does. You know? He's a big dude. Super, super hero style. Yeah, yeah, he is a big guy. But he was telling me that he felt a certain way after season seven and, and that there was a lot of him that was ready to be done. That's because I left. He fucking there missed you the go. fuck out of me, dude. But then he said, you know, once I got over that hurdle and, and I did season eight, he goes, season eight, season nine, season 10, I had a blast. And I had a blast during season eight, but there was a part of me, and it certainly wasn't all money because I didn't negotiate with Warner Brothers at all for season eight. They just kept coming back with different offers. Not necessarily monetary offers? Um, Mostly monetary, but also it was Greg Berlanti that sort of like came with the, the lifestyle offer of what if such a thing as a half season existed for you? Which wasn't to say that the show was going to do a half season, but what if you just did a half season? And it was like, well, yeah, because I wanted to go on a trip with my family, but then the moment that I stepped back on set, I just there was just a part of me that was like, yeah, you just stayed a little, just a little too long, just a little. Do you think? Uh, does it ever concern you that you'll? Uh... You'll have another panic attack, or do you feel like, you know what, now I know what to do. I learned my lesson. I learned how to disconnect. I learned how to take a break. I learned how to say no in a certain way. I learned how to, 
you know, maybe it's working out more. Maybe it's a combination of a lot of things. But do you think, does that fear ever cross your mind? Like, hey, I didn't like this feeling. Or do you just feel like, hey, my mind knows that this, there was nothing physically wrong with me. And that's important, by the way. Yeah. Because I had a doctor tell me this. Actually, it was a therapist. Therapist goes, when you're having a panic attack, here's what I want you to do. Ask yourself, is there anything wrong with me? Is there anything wrong with my heart? No, I have my heart checked. I have a great heart. Yeah. Is there anything wrong with your... Uh, liver whoever whatever no you just got tested for everything right so you know what this is this is in your mind so what do you think you need well you probably should there's a lot of things there's a lot of things to prevent anxiety right so don't be drinking a lot of caffeine especially you know late in the day uh you know make sure you get sleep working out diet there's all these things that add don't you think alcohol those are- drugs anything that you do that alters your mind i don't worry about it as much because retrospectively this was not a situation where I came over and because I didn't like the furniture set up in your room. And it's actually true that I was like, <laughs> I couldn't get right now. I'm very comfortable and not just because I'm feeling you better mentally. You the room around. But you changed the room around and I felt like I was constantly worried about leaning forward to get to the mic, but then I was tired and I felt like I was sitting weird. My point being is that it, this panic attack did not hit me when I was sitting in this room. This okay, panic good. attack was in the fucking mail, right? It was it was in evidence when I was really dragging myself around the day before, and it was in evidence when I tried to cancel going to the doctor that day and couldn't pick myself up off the ground, and it was in evidence when, you know, everything in my mind told me not to come over and do the podcast, but my brain wasn't functioning properly, and I was still in the mindset of, I can't let people down. I always, that's my whole thing. I always think I'm going to let people down. So I always got to yeah. keep doing stuff. Did you, uh, by the way, I want to talk about that for a second, but did you go, did you do what your wife asked? Did you go see someone? I haven't, we haven't spoken with anyone. I think you say we haven't spoken since. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're in a fight. <laughs> We're divorced. Not a, um, uh, I haven't spoken with anyone uh, professionally. Uh, that's something that we utilized when we were up in Vancouver and we've actually spoken with a couple of friends of ours uh, who had some really great recommendations uh, for both when we're down here and when I'm off in Atlanta shooting, but just, we found it incredibly helpful. Sometimes we would sit in there, she would talk for 80 minutes and I would just sit there and listen, or I would talk for 80 minutes and she would just sit there and listen. And sometimes we talk about our relationship and sometimes we talk about other people. All right. But uh, we're going to get back into that, but... You think that helps? It does help. Although I don't, know that it relates to the panic attacks i think that it's more in pursuit of a better relationship for us um i would like to i think that i would be well served to have someone that i can do a a mental check-in since i can't come on your podcast every four (laughs) weeks but uh that's true well you could could. actually actually i i told i told welling today i'm like i'm going over to rosenbaum's house today he goes oh yeah i go yeah i had a I did his podcast before the break and I had a fucking panic attack right in the middle of it. He goes, no, you didn't. I said, yeah, I did. He goes, eh, there are worse places to have it. <laughs> right? Yeah. But you know what the reality is? It's, I was just like, hey, I was worried about you. I was like, I know you're going to get through this. You know, you're going to power through it. And I didn't want to hear, I didn't want to hear that at the time, but I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I don't think I said, did I say that? Well, you said like, what? but this was before it happened. You you know, but but I was clearly... You know, I thought I was pretty panic attack. Or no, I thought I was pretty forthcoming that I was having a difficult time. I, I letting, loved it. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. Really? That you said, you know, I'm going to go. You could have just left it like that. You know, I'm going to go. I'm not feeling well. But then you go, no, I'm, I'm having a panic attack. Again, I, I think that it's just like seeing you go through this. And now that we see what you're doing to prevent it and, and knowing that, you know, people move ahead. And also the place that you had it in. That's a key. Like I always hear like, you know, from therapists, they'll say, if you have a panic attack and you run, right, it's important for you to face the place where you had it. Yeah. And you came back and you might be like, you know, I had a panic attack out there. I don't want to go back. I don't know. I've had that situation where I'm like, oh my God, I had it here. I don't, you know, if you have it on set and you run off, then you're like, fuck. And every time you go on set, you're going to get anxiety. Mm Mm-hmm. Was well, supposedly. Um, yeah, I mean, I dealt with one towards the latter part of season seven of Arrow. I can't, 
can't remember what triggered it. Fatigue. Come to think of it. I bet. Maybe fatigue. Sure. I got in touch with our first assistant director and I was like, I'm, uh, I'm not doing well physically right now. Um, I'm, I'm having a, I'm having an issue with anxiety and, uh, I'm going to come into work, but I'm not great. And he wasn't actually the first assistant director on set that day. Um, but the other first assistant director, it was her, her first or second episode. And I didn't fucking know. I didn't know her. Right. Right. I liked her, but I didn't right. know her. Right. So I had him just let all the, all the people. Cause you didn't feel know. comfortable cause you didn't know her. I didn't know her. Right. right. Period. And I got my work done that day. Uh, I asked to do my pieces of a fight that ended the day early. And I spent every possible moment that I could in my trailer, actually listening to the calm app on the, uh, on the iPhone, I love that app. Did it help been, you? Yeah, I've been using that yeah, too. Yeah, it does help. Yeah, just the, I've just been listening to the Daily Calm, which is just 10 minutes. I've been tracking my sleep, which is which is good. Just making sure that all that, that stuff- gives me, That can give you a little anxiety though. Sure, I can so see I'm how like, that- I'm like, wait a minute, my heart rate was this. I right. had five, five hours. I mean, I guess you kind of know if you're sleeping well or not, You know right? what, you wake up and you feel rested or you yeah, don't. Yeah, or you know when you go to bed. I mean, I, I probably won't do that for, for much longer- but it, it's just nice to just get a track on things. But when it comes to facing something, the people on the arrow set, I'm sure that knew that something was amiss. I was fine with my work that day. But you're probably, your disposition was but a little My disposition bit off. was off. At when, if people asked me how I was, I said, I'm not particularly great, but I'm okay. But then at the end of the day, I, I, I thanked the crew for their... And, and the cast for their thoughtfulness, for their understanding, for their patience. I let them know that I was having some issues with anxiety. And then I said, but I'll see you tomorrow and I'm sure that I'll be better. And everyone, you know, I think people like sort of tepidly applauded, which was not what I was looking for, but- Well, you're brave. I, but I faced, I faced that fear as opposed to thinking to myself that entire night, those people are going to be wondering what the hell is wrong with me because I'm just a I'm just a moody actor up until I tell them that I'm actually going through something. Like, oh my god, that's why he was. Yeah, what? but at the same time, there are crew members that are probably like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who gets panic attacks? Or the celebrities, the actors. Yeah, what's the matter, buddy? Uh, not enough gold plated threads on your goddamn sheets, brother. <laughs> brother, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something though. I know it sounds so funny. Good on you. Yeah. That's brave. I didn't do that. I had anxiety attacks on Impastor, and instead of going to the crew and saying, "Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having a panic attack," I, me, who's so open, maybe more so since I've been doing this podcast because I didn't have a podcast when I was doing that. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. I pretended everything was okay. I pretended I had diarrhea. I pretended I had. <laughs> Listen, man, I lied. I didn't tell one person except my assistant. Look, I'm having an anxiety attack. He's like, uh, uh, what do you want me to do? I go, nothing. I don't want anybody to know. They'll think, then all of a sudden I'm not, they can't work with me. Uh, you know, I'm going to get, but that's not how it is. It's like you hit a wall. Well, listen, man, look, this, this is the great thing. This podcast doesn't have to be long because we did the first half hour. I got some time. But I'm, look, I'm excited for you. And I didn't think, you know, the turnaround is like, wow, two, two weeks. And look, I don't think you're done doing things for yourself to disconnect, to, yep. to, to, you know, to keep that in check. It's not like, oh, that happened. Oh, now I'm good. And I'll forget about what happened. I think that's in the back, back, back of your mind going, hey, I got to take care of myself. Yeah. And I think I, I give a, a whole lot of credit to to my wife who very bravely said, look, look, buddy, I, I need you to get better, right? Like for a variety of reasons, okay? One of which is you owe it to yourself. Secondly, you owe it to our kid. And third, you fucking owe it to me. If you think that you're at your best right now, then your fucking best isn't good enough. That's a tough thing to say. Yeah. That's a really tough thing to say. It's even tougher when the person doesn't want to hear it. So I give her a lot of credit because she said that. She said that stuff to me. And, you know, I think one of the biggest things is, is you want to fix it immediately. I know. You want to snap your fingers and you want it all to be better. And that's not the way that it works. You got to, you know, 
I'm back in the gym right now and I'm just eating shit every day, humble pie. Like I'm going in there and I'm benching less than I benched when I was in 12th fucking grade going for football. Because guess what? When you take a year off and you're in your late thirties, shit goes away. Yeah, I did. You know? That's why and, old guys put, hike their pants up above their button. Yeah. And, LA button. And look, I have a lot of faith that I'm going to snap back, but I was in there today working out with a retired NFL player who's like 6'5", 270. Know, you don't have to say, say his name. But, but he's, I know but he's, uh, You would know, if you like football, you would you would know of him. I mean, he was pro bowler. Right. I think he, his career got cut short by injuries a little bit, but like... He was like a player when at the, when at the height of his powers, you just you like if you just said his last name, he'd be like, "Oh yeah, yep, 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 yep." Uh, but he's, you know, I had to spar with him today. <laughs> not easy. No, exhausted. I am exhausted. I've been going to bed at like seven thirty at night, and you getting eating up what time? Six fifteen, six thirty. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's twelve hours. No, I, close. Well, I would. Well, I'm not a mathematician, but I can't sleep more than like fucking six or seven hours. I just can't. My mind's just too active. I have to right now. I have to. Although I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not straight through sleeping. And one of the things that I'm actually working on is, is uh, going to sleep with, with, uh, with no sound because I've been uh, listening to AirPods. I've been listening to, uh, to, to podcasts that sort of help fall asleep. And then if I wake up, I'll just put something else on and. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to I got to work on that. I remember you said something by the way when you were having that when we you know, you all go ahead you can cry because you know what? I've already cried twice today. That was last time, yeah. And I remember I was like, "Wow. That's when I knew it was right away." So that's I cried twice today. I'm like, "Whoa, Stephen cried yeah. twice?" <laughs> yeah. Stephen doesn't cry. I don't think I don't think Stephen cries. But I think that's probably also the way of the world. You feel like shit, you're tired, you don't know why, you're disconnected, you haven't disconnected, and then at the same time, you feel like you're letting your wife down, you think you're letting the world down, and all of a sudden, it's, you know, everybody needs help, I want to help people, I want to be there for them, and all of a sudden, who's there for me? Yeah, you got to take care of yourself first, like you said. You got to. Yeah, I think that's true. I think you just got to. Ryan, you take care of yourself, buddy? Yeah, sure. <laughs> He's a man of many words, isn't he, Stephen? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, look, man, I want to ask you some of these questions. I do this thing on Patreon, and it's just like, it's just 10 quick questions. Rapid fire, though. Hit me with it. The, hit me with your best shot. All right, this is easy. This is uh, Jerry W. says, curious what your favorite role has been and why. Oliver Queen, because it changed my life. <sighs> Simple. See, you are good at this. Jill E., how is it working on New Girl? Really good. One of the most uh, exciting days of my entire career is I worked on private practice and New Girl at the same day. Started on New Girl, went to private practice, went back to New Girl. I was just holding on at that point, just trying to blend in. But ironically, one of my first days on set, I have to, I have to bust into a party asking everyone if I've just pissed my pants. So I had to be pretty outsized. And you know, I'm in there with Max Greenfeld and and Zoe and Hannah and. Uh, you know, all the Jake, all these, all the, all these like Ryan, uh, Quentin, he was on True Blood. Yeah, I'm he terrible. was the bigger, he was the bigger guest star in that. It doesn't matter. K W A N T E N, however you pronounce that. He's an Australian guy, really good actor. And I was just trying to hang on, but that experience was, uh, really cool. Trisha, how was it working with Tom and Michael on that's me, a knocking point? It's been good. It's I've amazing. enjoyed it so far, yeah, although right? I haven't been around as much. Welling thanked me today. Said you guys were going to do some uh, social media stuff for it. I like how you switched around. Yeah, I'm the pure. He's the evil this That's time. That's right. Much better. Yeah, it was good. It was one of your biggest sellers last year. You know that? It was. Yeah, thanks for uh, inviting us to that. You're welcome. Trisha B., what was it like taking a role so shortly after the final episode of Arrow? Don't know yet. Get yeah, back, you don't. Get back to me in like mid-March. Trevor asks, if you could choose any duo's costume for Halloween with Rosenbaum, what would you choose? Well, my wife and I have already gone as Franks and Beans, which is my favorite. Franks so, and Beans! Franks and Beans! As we were taking a photo, this girl comes up to us and is like, are you guys dressed as Franks and Beans? I'm like, yeah, Fuck, yeah absolutely. Are. And she goes, you've got to come and meet my dad and his brother. Oh my god! And they took us right to the Fairley Brothers. And one of the reasons that I'm, one of the reasons that I'm wearing the Franks and Beans costume or Frank and Beans, is because I'm such a fan of the Fairleys. Oh yeah, 
Like I'm a huge I fan of the Farrelly's. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we had a nice chat with them. But what, I don't know, what would we do? Um, Brandon Stimpy, uh, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> um, oh God, you know what would be great is if um, we should go as uh, Jamie and Cersei Lannister, hold hands on the red carpet. Can I be Jamie? No, I want to be go as, Hey, let's go as uh, let's go as Billy Bob Thornton and Angelina Jolie back when they were a couple. I'm in. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor S. For that, a lot of options. Nico P. What scene do you remember that took the longest to film because people kept laughing? Oh, probably just the scene in the bunker. You know, just something where you get to the end of the day. I don't know. Nothing in particular comes to mind, but just something. You're just probably fatigue. You get to the you get to the end of the day, and it's you know I I I didn't used to have a trick for it, and then I would just think to myself, I am actively taking away time that I spend with my family because I can't get my shit together, and then I would probably I would usually stop laughing. But a good laugh is nice. A good laugh is really nice. Nicole V. In playing Oliver Queen for eight seasons, what did you learn about him that surprised you most, and how did it affect how you portrayed him? I don't know if I learned something about Oliver Queen per se as as he's a character that that obviously has some comic book obviously has some comic book origins, but you know, was largely the creation of the creative team and my creation on Arrow, just because it was a very different version of the character. I think I learned a lot about how a character, any character, can grow and change over the, the course of time. I like it. Two more. Robert B. In your career, what do you see as your biggest waste of money? Biggest waste of money? And that could be taken anyway. I mean, in your career, what do you see as your biggest waste of money? I mean, is that like, it doesn't cost to be an actor in the beginning. I mean, or is he talking about, uh, you know, you bought something at, during I mean, your in my like, career, I don't, I don't know in my career. Like, I bought a van. I still have the van. I don't give a fuck. It was the best purchase ever. I... That's what he's talking about. <laughs> I think the stupidest purchase I've ever made was when I had a Chevy Cavalier Z24 in like 1999 and I thought it needed a cooler stereo. <laughs> the fuck? Who needs a subwoofer and a Chevy Cavalier? Mm, mm, that's because you, you can go down the street just banging it too short. That's right. I remember how it all began. Dion K, are crossovers fun for you to shoot? Be honest. No. They're not. They're brutal, aren't they? No, they're not brutal. You just can't, they come out great. The fans love them. I always think of what we leave on the table because we try and shoot something really extraordinary. Overwhelming. And with this amazing scope within the confines of our typical schedule. It's never made any sense to me. It's just so frustrating. Right? It's so hard and you exhausting know, to accomplish. <laughs> In the first episode of the crossover that has already aired, my character dies. Now he comes back as this different DC character, which, you know, plays in part four of the crossover, uh, or part four and five of the crossover. But I'm, my character's dying in episode one, and he's dying on a gurney in the in the arrow bunker, you know, where say, you laughed. Part of me? Is that where you laughed? You said in the bunker. Yeah, well, yeah, you la we laughed in the Jesus. bunker. This is not so much of a laughing okay, scene. Okay, yeah, yeah. But some of my lines, my lines were to Cat McNamara, to Katie Lotz, and to Grant. And they were trying to wrap Katie and Grant because they had hit their 13-hour mark right. or whatever it was. They were trying to wrap Katie and Grant before I shot the coverage of the scene where I died. I blame no one for this, but this is a scene with me from Arrow that's taking place on Supergirl with a Supergirl crew with demands on both Grant and Katie Lotz who are on Flash and Legends who are on a different schedule than the crossover because they're shooting different shit and they're trying to pull them so that they don't Flash and Legends mess up their day the next day. Meanwhile... The fucking Green Arrow was laying on a gurney trying to deliver his lines to something other than a fucking tennis ball. So, you know, there are lots of scenes where, you know, I'm acting and there just aren't other actors there. And that's just not an acceptable way of creating the best product from my perspective. And I think that it is a little bit disrespectful to the 
actors and their process speaking personally. Other actors might not give a shit, right? Um, but for that moment and that scene, you, it, but that's for, important. But for that moment and for that scene, I mean, I'm trying to think of what the more important scenes are, right? And it's not just because it involves my character or my character's death, but... I mean, how hard is it to not prioritize that? <sighs> you know what? First of all, Dion K., I appreciate your question. Yeah, they but still come, they come out great. They they come out great. I'm glad that we do them. Right. They're not the most fun to shoot. DNK, I also thank you for starting another panic attack for Steven. So thank you. I got you a little present. I, I saw that. I told you this is the this is a massage. She's the my girl Anastasia. She's amazing. Okay. And I, and I got one for you, and I want you to use her because she'll come right. right to you. She lives around the corner, and she's brilliant. And okay. She's, she's not weird or anything. She's uh, she, you'll love her. You'll probably start using her. I like but the, that's on me. Don't no tip, that, nothing. Man. Just it's all taken care of. Okay. And I, I just think that you uh, you need that. I think massage in your life is going to add. Do you I get love, massage. I, I do. Good. I love it's massage. very important. I think it's very important. Whenever my wife and I go to a nice. Uh, hotel, hotel or like the four we love the we love any four seasons anywhere just because you know what you're getting yeah you know like four seasons um yeah you just you just know what you're getting and the and the, and the like the quality of service is just great but the, we always yeah massages and couples massages whenever possible that's neat couples yeah. i'd fart if she was there i, mean, I if she, my wife worry there. about farting no i worry about snoring oh that happens where you wake up you i know i no, always no, just, and but I, they they're used to it I farting they might not i know be used they're to used to it but i don't think that my wife falls asleep during the massage so she would hear it all she'd i laugh at you. always fall asleep during the massage which is odd because she's getting the swedish or the floral or she's getting stones put on her or something like that and i've i've got i've got a i've got a woman with her elbow deep in my back and just driving shit out of it and you're asleep with that i fall asleep to <laughs> that christ you i'm weird masochistic. dude lastly heels you're going to be shooting that soon you're getting prepared for it you know i don't really want to act unless it's something I want to do or I'm producer I'm working on or I really just love it or I'm like oh there's an element of fun but that when you said that I kept thinking of the movie The Wrestler and man like that sort yeah. of, that movie was just a brilliant movie and I don't know what this is going to be and I'm hope I'm hoping it's gritty and a little dark and a little you know not as it's all those things there's a gritty element to it just because there's a there's a grungy element to the wrestling world well not just that but to the independent wrestling world I mean mm. we're not we're not, uh, if our promotion comes through town, we're not going to the fucking, fucking Staples Center. We're not going to the Forum. Right. We're going to a, to, a, to, a, to a shitty, so that element of it, you know, this sort of the smoke-filled arenas like back in the day, but at its heart, it's, it's about a, you know, it's about a family and it's about the, the, the characters that populate the independent wrestling scene. And when I say characters, I, I, I mean like, these people are characters. You know what I mean? You have to be a little, and to all my to all my friends that are in the business, I, you know, I don't take this back. You got to be a little fucking crazy to be a sure. professional. I think you got to be a little crazy to do be an actor. I think you got a little bit, but definitely like, yep. Well, look, man, it sounds. I, look, I'd watch this even if you weren't in. It sounds really cool, and if there is a cool part that they haven't cast, something you know, your buddy Rosenbaum. Listen, the only reason I say that, I wouldn't say it, but it sounds like something I'd like. So if there's something. Even if it's a cool little character part or whatever, I can grow a stash, you know. Grow a stash. Are you going to wrestle? Well, no, I wouldn't wrestle. It wouldn't be a good idea. I don't idea. think your neck is... Uh... No, no, no. And I wouldn't want to get that big, but I could easily be somebody's brother or manager or some guy who drives a pickup truck who's like into sure. you. <laughs> There's a lot of things I could do. Play a character and fun, something like that. Something that works like two days a week, and you're like, oh yeah, it's easy, man. Sure, Mel's but busting his yeah, ass. no, no, sure. Two days, two days a week, except it's going to be those two days is going to be first up Monday morning and last up Friday night. So what? <laughs> I would do it. But it sounds fun, so keep that in mind. Have you ever shot in uh, Georgia? Yeah, yeah, I did a week uh, for Guardians Two there, and I shot. I think now nah, did I shoot this other this Bruce Willis thing? Like this independent movie I did. I don't know, no, no, just just Guardians. I think there. I um not a lot. I mean, I I grew up like five hours from there, like in Indiana. If you drive oh, okay. like six hours, yeah. But yeah, I know that area. I found my apartment there, and and they they. I mean, I was gonna get it anyway, but they pitched it to me that 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 there was a guy doing a Marvel show there right now. Like that fucking matters to me. I don't know who I don't know who it is. Oh really? Oh, I'll stay there. I'll take it. That guy's doing it. <laughs> Anyway, also, you know, I, I definitely, I think it'd be fun to work with you. You look like somebody would just be a good time to work with. I think we'd have fun. I like having a good time when I work. 
What yeah, a, me I mean, too. Me too. What a, I don't care about being the lead. I never get. And I'm not the lead often, but I never really. I want to go and have fun. Yeah, I want to have a good time on set when people are looking to have fun and get the work done and be the best they could be and be supported. Yeah. That's the best thing in the world to be a part of. You know, when it comes to heels, I was the I was the first person cast, and I think I'll be the first person in the in the credits. But that show's only going to work. If everyone works. If everyone works and it's an ensemble, if if we don't get some it's gonna to be tough for us to 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 sort of find a niche in the marketplace if 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 we don't get some characters that really pop. Like do you watch Succession? Succession Succession. I heard to watch that. Do you watch that, Ryan? I've seen a couple episodes. Is it's it good? good? Well, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, but it's like, you know, they've got they've got great characters and the leads on on that show are great. But if you don't have a cousin Greg who just comes out and pops and is just constantly funny and, right. and is and is and is the and is saying the lines that people are quoting at the water cooler the next day if that's actually still an expression i think people still know what it means but i don't think there's water coolers anymore uh if you don't have those characters and we've got a couple a couple of the of the uh, uh mid card wrestlers that should really pop really yeah oh that's good hopefully it sounds like fun man very yeah, colorful yeah. Well, I'm excited. Uh, look, this has been great. Thank you for coming back, especially after you know the first half. This is the first time I've ever like had to have someone come back, finish, and we can kind of go talk about what that what had happened. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm I'm honored, and uh, you live down. I the live street. here. I live here. You're now. now a member of where I'm a member. We won't talk about that, but we can go there and hang out sometime. Yeah. You know, it's right around the corner. We've got say. Pache. I saw you there once. Pache, I like Pache. It's a nice restaurant. And uh, also, when you're and you're coming back, you don't you're not. You said you wouldn't do another podcast before mine when you, when you're done with Heels, so we could talk about. Well, it. I don't know if I said. I mean, I'll do one in between now and then. But when it comes time, no, no, to, no, no I just w- said when the show comes out. When it comes time to promote Heels, I'll I'll come back. Yeah. So right, keep exactly. growing your keep growing your subscriber base. How do you measure? I'm curious Success? about this. Like, no, 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 no. When you do a when you do a podcast, do they? Do these various platforms are they pretty good at reporting back to you? Like, well, you have a platform you could check uh, out. You know, I I could look every day of like our numbers, how we're growing, what we did this month, which each guest does. So it's very important to you know to get people to subscribe, to listen to, and yep. and it, and it's also hard because you know I'm not a huge star, but you know your guests. If you mm-hmm. have a good guest, somebody that people want to listen to, and then if they like the guest, you're hoping then they start liking you. And then people start listening and going, hey, I'm gonna, I can't wait to hear what Rosenbaum's going to say or ask or what, yeah. th- what he's going to get out of this guest or what I'm going to get out of this guest. Yeah, I mean, I listen to The Daily because I like the way that Michael Barbaro is able to talk about complex subjects, but asks the questions that I think, you know. No one wants th- to ask. Well, not not that no one wants to ask. Actually, he asks the question that, that people that are probably his level of intelligence think are beneath them, right? But he understands... A, something complex like i don't know shit about syria i didn't know anything about syria but when he does a podcast that's 25 minutes long that talks about the basis for said conflict in syria and why it might be problematic for the united states to just pull their troops out of there i feel like i walk away going oh i know, I know something, something. Yeah. so i listen to it for him in the way that he goes about a subject as opposed to just listening to it because i'm interested in current events I hear that. Does and that I, and I, yes, I, I would actually listen to that. I think for me, it's more like, you know, what can I do? What do I offer? I think what I offer is sheer panic. <laughs> <laughs> sure panic. No, I think it's, I think what people want is like they, they go to late night, they see late night television and it's just like, oh, Stephen Amell on arrow. And you make a few jokes and you go away and you're in your suit and you're nice. Yeah. But when they can get inside somebody and go, hey, this, this is like a real conversation between two human beings. It's not like, oh, he's a big actor and he's, and the more people open up, the more people talk about um, their life and their shit. It just, it. I think it helps universally. I think it helps the world. I think it, it's, you know, um, you know. Other, otherwise, if there, were, if there was, if you weren't on this, no one would know about your panic attack. No one would know. Oh, they would think he's indestructible. Look well, at him. He's a real life superhero. He doesn't have problems. And I think it helps normalize that. And I've said that a million times. What was the name of the guy that you brought up? That's a that's a friend of yours that had done background work on Arrow. Ha! That- <laughs> Troy. Troy. Yeah. Troy. I mean, you know, that's, I know that you thought that maybe I got stuck on that to sort of bring it back to the beginning of the podcast like that. that we did last year. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, two weeks ago. Well, sure. But last year. But it actually makes me pretty happy that somebody like Troy might, 
might have thought that I was a dink and then listens to the podcast and it helps it helps change an opinion. I'm not out I'm not out to change opinions, but I don't understand how anything but the long form conversation is what people want to hear now. Right? You, you, I just want to you get to know you. You listen. Dane yeah. Cook, I think I talked about, it, I don't know, prime example. Many people, oh, yeah, that guy's he's kind of an asshole. All right, yeah, that guy's this. Is he? How do you know? He's not. Of course. I had him on the podcast. I talked to him for now. We talked about this stuff. And afterwards, I, I know all my listeners were immediately like, like, love this guy. Yep. He's a great guy. Because you don't know anyone. So when Troy is on set and he hears, oh, well, this is happening. Why? Because he, he didn't pay extra attention to someone or he didn't. Yeah. He wasn't, oh, he looked like he was intense on set. Maybe he was preparing for the role. There's so many variables sure. that you just cannot judge anyone. You don't know what they're going through. Mm. You know, I mean, Ryan could have, when you walked out, gone, God, that, that guy's a fucking mess. It sounds like Ryan was really despondent. Well, I just don't <laughs> think he's ever experienced stuff like that. That's why when I ask him questions, he gives me three words or a couple of multi. I'm monitoring levels. Lay off. It would. It's. It'd be <laughs> weird. I've never. I've never been in the presence of someone that is that sort of went through what, what I went through. But I. I imagine that that would have been a weird thing and a slightly stressful thing to see. I, I thank God that I. I knew what was going on. I didn't. Right. Forget. I, for some reason. I don't know what it is, but I don't freak out when people have shit going on. For some reason, there's something in my mind or my brain. Maybe it's my gift. Seriously, I mean, this not saying. Maybe sounds like I'm a godlike person, and I'm fucking not. All I'm saying is, that maybe that was my gift to sort of like when someone's freaking out or or, or or pukes all over a floor, or I go into emergency mode and calm the person down mode, and I just want to help somebody. Yeah, I just for I don't know what it is. If someone's crying. I'm like, hey, what's going on? I don't want to be like, oh my god, oh, I'm never that guy who's going to look like they're freaking out, appear to be freaking out. I'm there honestly because I think I can help you. Good. That's how I feel. That probably feels pretty good. It does. It feels good. I felt like, hey, you know, he's leaving. He's getting up. There, he's made a decision. But I'm like, hey, I'm cool with that. I just wanted to be safe. I want to yeah. be better. That's you followed it. up. You made sure I got home. You texted my wife. You know, didn't know you had her number, but whatever. Yeah, that's something we could that's talk about. Warm. Dude, I love you. That's, that's it. Let's take some pictures and get out of here. All right, man. Thanks for having me back. Thanks, Steve. All right, buddy. Well, there you have it. That was uh, Stephen Amell. Stephen, uh, again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming in. This is the kind of stuff that I want to talk about. This is the kind of stuff that is real. And I can't say it enough that, uh, to kudos, he could have easily said, fuck off. I don't want to do it. I'll do it when I feel better. Don't air any of this. And that would have been fine. But I'm glad that he chose to allow you to hear it made me feel like, holy shit, I just wish I would have spoken up sooner. You know, if this podcast was out before I was doing in Pastor, I would have probably been more vulnerable and more open to allowing people into my feelings and in my mind. But you do feel like, God, I'm the I'm a producer on this show. Uh, I'm the lead. Uh, you don't want people to think you're not strong. Isn't that stupid? Isn't it okay to to not be strong sometimes? Is it okay to just be vulnerable and let things happen and just kind of give yourself a break totally it is you saw me were you at thanksgiving i was not you were not yeah i had a breakdown in front of my friends because my grandpa passed away on thanksgiving and i remember everybody went around and said thanks for everything and i uh of course they ended with me and i couldn't keep my shit together and i really tried and i don't cry in front of people i really do not cry i'm starting to say you know what fuck it if i feel emotional if something hits me i'm gonna cry for a second i'm gonna let it out i think it's important and i cried i looked up and there's everyone else was crying which helped me and i think it's nice i think it's it's important to just be honest with yourself and honest with other, everyone else like hey you know i'm not comfortable right now I'm trying to act like nothing's going on, but I'm having a panic attack and uh, I don't know what to do. Maybe there's a doctor that could help me. Maybe someone else here has an idea, but get me through this. And then there's not that weight on you that you have to, you know, you have to go back and finish the scene. You're know, like, hey, let's do it in pieces. And are you, are you okay now? Let's, let's just work this out together. And okay, is it embarrassing? No, it's not, it shouldn't be. It's, it's like, hey, this is life. Let's, uh, Help our fellow man out. Hey, I want to give a shout out to, to these patrons, these beautiful patrons. They uh, they put a lot of money into uh, Patreon, and um, I really fucking appreciate it. Leah S, Barry I, Dion K, Lauren G, Jill E, Robert B, Jason W, 
Angelina G, Kevin R, Trisha, Nancy D, hi Nancy, Bobby B, Nico P, Yukiko, Yukiko, that's such a great name, Yukiko, Jerry W, Taylor B, Emily, Sarah V, Emma H, Bortex. Thank you guys so much. Um, also, the wine, the wine, Pure Evil Wine is out. So get a subscription, Knocking Point, that's also Stephen's uh, company. Uh, Welling and I made a new wine since our wine sold out. We're going to keep getting you great guests. I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Ryan Taz, who's my engineer, who's here, who's just uh, makes me feel better about life. Oh, great. Yeah. I hope you uh, like the questions I asked Stephen, the shit talking. I hope uh, we're uh, making the show better and stronger. What you can do is just get your folks, get your friends to subscribe. Let's go out on this song, Mia. I like this song, Teus. It's from uh, Left on Laurel. This one is called Let's Go for a Ride. You left my heart out in the cold Saying you tried or so I'm told Feels like wasted hope Now I guess I got plenty of time Supposed to amount to much Always laughing and I said too much I think I'm falling apart right now Getting myself together Tell me 